Come forward. Are you Christopher Ryan Cormier? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm any statements you make during this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Lower your hand. You are here with Mr. Adams, your attorney and the state's attorney. There is a motion to revoke unadjudicated probation that's been filed as of January 3rd of 24. Does the defendant waive a formal reading of this? Can we proceed in summary? Yes. We obviously have to clean up a uh, mistake here. In summary, this motion to revoke probation alleges that on July 17th, 2023, in this criminal district court, you were placed on five years deferred or unadjudicated probation for forgery of a financial in financial instrum. I'm sure that's instrument. Uh, yes, sir. Any objection to changing that to correct it? All right. That's corrected on this day to spell it right. I mean, it's obvious what it is, uh, but nobody's asking for additional time to prepare because that of uh, that mistake. All right. Is all of that true so far, sir? It is, Your Honor. Number one, state you failed to report to the probation office for the months of September, October, November, and December. 2023 in violation of your probation order. Is that true or untrue? That is true, Your Honor. Two, you failed to never become intoxicated or be under the influence of intoxicating substances on or about August 14, 23. You admitted to using methamphetamine in violation of your probation order. Is that true? That is correct, Your Honor. And failing, it states you failed to, for, to, uh, perform community service hours as required. Did he? Form any now? Yes. No. Is that true or untrue that you failed to perform any community service hours as uh, required of you on your probation? And that was to begin on or about July 17th of 2023. Uh, Your Honor, it is true. Uh, because I did not report, I did not get the, uh, the location or the what to do is it, but it's not but it, it is true. it's it's your fault not it is absolutely okay are you are you pleading true then to allegations one two and three of this motion to revoke probation voluntarily knowingly intelligently and because those allegations are true yes your Honor. do you understand by a knowing and voluntary plea of true to one or more violations of probation that is enough to grant this motion to revoke probation by preponderance of the evidence or greater your deferred or unadjudicated probation can be revoked. You can be sentenced to no less than 180 days up to two years in the state jail, right? The state jail? That's correct, Your Honor. And knowing that, do you insist on pleading true to that? I'm sorry? Do you insist on pleading true to these allegations? Yes, sir. I find you are pleading true voluntarily. You understand and appreciate the consequences of pleading true. The order on deferred adjudication misspells the attorney to the state. Uh, but that's not that if, if Ms. Fels is named, that doesn't invalidate the the order. All right. Uh, what's is there an agreement here? No, it's uh, unagreed. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, Judge, I'll run to your attention on the minister. Let me see your pre sentence report. I'll bring to your attention on the administrative hearing in the style of mm -hmm. 1723. And if you look at the top, uh, uh, well, not paragraph, but the top of the document and mm -hmm. the head, yeah. and, and, and if you see for his name, it, it says transient. And then in the findings that you had, it mentioned the defendant's uh, being a uh, transient with his lack of income. And he also didn't you grow up in Biter? I did, yes, Your Honor. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. No, and it also mentioned that he did request uh help for his drug use. And I'm reading the paragraph where it says uh I need to obviously he's supposed to you know nine five twenty-three uh, because of his pregnancy and lack of income, and he requested uh assistance for his drug use. Now the reason why I point that out from the very mm -hmm. start is is that when he got on probation, we all knew that he was poor. He didn't have a place to stay because he was he was transient. And 
and that uh, his finances were not uh, when he was unemployed, when he was he didn't have finances at all. He was basically struggling uh, to live and to survive. So he got this deferred adjudication, and he wants to tell you in what? his own in his own words why he was not able to, okay. to report. Go ahead. Right. Let's go. So with you being in that financial situation that you was in, can you kind of tell us what happened when you got on this probation? I mean, I, I had a camp behind Home Depot in the woods. Okay. Uh, no income, no job. That has potential for you. Uh, what, what home people were you at? Uh, off of Lucas. So this right. is in Beaumont. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Concord and, and the freeway there. It's in Beaumont. Okay, so at the time you got on this probation, you was living in that camp, right? Correct. And while living in that camp, you were not working? Correct. So that means for your ability to pay, did you have any access to any resources to pay? No, sir, I didn't. And you had any property that could be sold? No. So on the 34, in violation of condition 34, you had no possible way of, of, of paying, right? That's not, a, that's not an issue. That's okay. not an issue. He didn't admit to that. Well, I, I, and I don't punish anybody for inability to pay. Let's go on some, to what, what we're really here for. Okay. It's failure to appear, well, using drugs, and not doing community service. Were you uh, failing to show up for probation? Well, your inability to pay would also go to those other three as well, because on the failure to report, you were at the homeless camp by the Home Depot. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that Home Depot, would that be on, I guess, I 10? Yes, on Peter Road. Yes. On Peter Road. And then were you required to physically report at the probation department? Correct. Yes. And and being on that probation, the probation department, how far was the probation department from that home? People here in downtown from there, uh, I, I would say at least 10 miles. At least 10 miles. And did you have any transportation to get you there to be able to report? Not even a bicycle. No. And with that being said, would it, would it be quite dangerous for you to try to walk on that highway, I 10 to get to downtown? It would be up and stop before walking. And I didn't get he's even stopped before for the walk. I've been stopped before for, for walking during the daytime. So are you saying that, that that would have been a significant danger to your health and your body to try to walk on that I-10 uh, interstate? Yeah, sure, that'd be true. All right, and then on the failure to report your community service, if you don't have a bicycle, if you're living homeless in a homeless camp behind the home detail, what was the community service that you were asked to do? Well, they would get to uh, to report, so I don't know what it would have been. Okay. So with that being the case, you didn't know what the community service was because you weren't able to report. That would be correct. Now, on the admitted to the uh, drug use, the methamphetamine, from the very top, is this something that you purchased or something that you were given? Sometimes I was given. I had no money, no income. What I did have, I with your food to survive. Right. And the reason why I had read to the judge earlier in the findings is, is that when you first got on this probation and when you were supposed to have the uh, meeting on 9 5 23, everybody knew from the, from the probation department all the way down on is that you didn't have a place to live, you didn't have any income, and even at that time, you you had a drug problem because you requested assistance for that, right? That would be correct, yes, sir. So this relapse that you had on using the meth that was not paid for by you, but did that go to your drug problem? Absolutely. So are you saying with you being homeless, being poor, having a drug problem, uh, not having any money, not having a bicycle, not having... Uh, anybody that can help you, family, friends, or otherwise, are you asking that the court give you one more shot at probation? Uh, that would be great because I now have a job. So what you're saying not only is, is that your circumstances at the time, in average. In average, right? Your circumstances then when you're living homeless in a homeless camp with no money, no, no nothing, that circumstance from then to today has changed, right? Yes, it has. So tell us specifically how that circumstance has now changed. I've got a construction job where I work Monday through Friday, and I have access to a vehicle at the home where I stay in. 
So I have a rise guaranteed verbalized while I was in jail as well. That I can get to it from my meetings and do right. Are you still living in that homeless camp? Well, not now. Obviously, you're not no, in no, jail. No. But what I'm saying is, is that if you were released, I have an address to you. Have an address to you. And, and where will that address be again? Four 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 Harding. And that's a physical home. Home. Yes, it is. No. And then when you said you also have that job, right? I do. And you say you do construction? Yes, I do. Handyman, construction work, painting houses, finishing houses. And who would be your employer? I do them by the name of Mike Cross. So basically what you're saying is, is that the probation department, the judge continues you on probation. They could call Mr. Mike right, right now and he would say, hey, uh, Christopher Ryan Comier has a job for me right now and he will be able to work. That's something they could pick up the phone and verify. Yes, it is. So you'll have a job, you'll have a place to stay. And with that, the other issue was you said that the transportation would be able to report. And the individual who owns the home I stay with has offered to get me to and from my meetings to my to able to report. Okay. So then I guess here's my last question is what happened from then to now? And what I mean by that is, is then you were living in a homeless camp. You didn't have a bike, didn't have transportation. You didn't have nothing. And then now we're in court. You have a job. You will have a place to stay. Then you will have transportation. How were you able to get that? Simply summed up. I was down on my luck at the time. And you said a what I, now? I was down, down on my luck. luck. You down on your luck? Okay, go ahead. And I got an opportunity to work. If you look at my resume, I got a hell of a resume. And that heck of a resume, just a short version of it is what? When did you get the opportunity to, to get employed? When did uh, that happen? About two months ago. About what then? It, it was towards the end of the, end of the month, uh, towards the end of December. So with that heck of a resume that you have, and now you do, and like I said, they can pick up the phone and call to verify your job. And they can pick up the phone and they're going to be to call that you got a place to live. And when we first got on probation, everybody knew up front that you didn't have a place to live and, 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 and you were homeless and everything, right? So now can you be successful in ways that you were not able to be successful before? I feel confident that I am, yes. And then our last argument mm -hmm. that we would make would be with this offense being forgery or financial instrument, one that's not a non-violent crime, right? And then with this non-violent crime, and I see your in violations have been nothing to do with violence, right? Correct. You're not going to be a danger to the community or anything like that, yeah, right? Absolutely. And you'll be able to, with your job, help restitution with this uh, person with the financial instrument, correct? Absolutely. So are you saying that when we look at the balancing the skills, you admit them, you have to be down on your look, but that if you're given the chance, if we look at where you were and look at where you are, you come a long way. Absolutely. And it come in a long way, you asking for a little mercy, right? Yes, I am. Right, because everybody in their lives have some trouble, some hills, some mountains to climb. And in this case, you climbed a pretty big, tall mountain to get from where you were to where you are. Sure. And that's and that's good. That's positive. Any, is there anything else you want to add that would be important on his probation? You think uh, on his performance while on probation? Anything? Anything at all? But how, well, by now, I have the means I can get to. The meaning to report. I had an ability to pay. No, anything at all. About how he's been doing all yeah. that? Yeah, anything at all. I guess, if I, if I understand that question, as far as how you were doing on probation, while you were living in that tent with no transportation and, and no running water and no uh, running lights, how were you doing at that time leading up to now? Very poor the person's getting back on my feet and, and back to what my life has been. So in terms of how you were doing, I'm trying to ask the question of how you were doing while you were or Otherwise, were you doing fine? Health-wise. Uh, I'm talking about you You weren't following the, you, you weren't reporting, we know that, and you weren't doing your community service. 
but uh, everything else you're doing fine you think yes sir all right is that your final answer yes sir. all right what about the theft conviction in november yeah sir. did you forget to tell me about that stealing from home depot and you got convicted you did 30 days in november yes sir. did you forget that no sir it wasn't brought up i i would it wasn't brought up good luck with that answer you don't think that's an elephant in this room surely it is yes sir you think we were just gonna be stupid and Absolutely. forget about it and yes, I gave you a fair opportunity for the last 20 minutes to bring it up. All right. But you were convicted. You're you're on my probation. You're stealing from Home Depot about $200 worth of stuff. And you did 30 days in county jail. Yes, sir, I did. While on this court's probation. Much less the other violations you committed. And you don't want to be straight with me. I gave you that opportunity. Anything else? I already stretched it out along to give you the hint. There's got to be something else. But you just didn't feel like you were honest enough to tell. That's not the case. Sorry. I, I, I didn't think so. I didn't, you you know, it's uh, 30 days in jail slipped your mind? No, sir. It did not. Um, All right. In the legal um, proceedings, I didn't know where we were at or if that was going to be Okay, go ahead. Uh, Your Honor, again, as you know, the defendant was. What are you only, asking for? Uh, Eighteen months stay jail. What are you asking for? Uh, uh, continue. He, he was, was, continue our putting on straight probation as it was the first. Uh, anything else you want to answer? No, sir. All right. If not, I'm going to find you a pleaded true to allegations one, two, and three in this motion to revoke probation uh, voluntarily, knowingly, intelligently. That is a, a sufficient to grant this motion to revoke probation by a preponderance of the evidence or greater and your deferred or unadjudicated probation is hereby revoked earlier in this case you pleaded guilty voluntarily to the state jail felony you were mentally competent to do so you understood and appreciated the consequences of pleading guilty there was sufficient evidence supporting your guilty plea to find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt i now find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of this state jail felony of forgery and you will hear my sentence to confinement in the state jail for 18 months. You will be given credit for all time uh, you have served in, uh, in uh, uh, relevance to uh, this case. Uh, you were put on probation for dishonesty. You committed an act of dishonesty. And you were in dishonest in front of me. Uh, I my recommendation, I would urge you to find honesty in your character and start using that. That is it. Tydrick Davis, come on up. Tydrick Davis. Uh, in your honor, I believe yeah. the uh, is that the PSI in that other file. I, I borrowed that from probation. Oh. Thank you. Are you on this one? Thank you. No. I need to see Mr. Davis. Yes. Yeah, I didn't know about that. Yeah.